Now we're gonna go over editing with Audacity, which is an open source software. So it's free, nobody owns it. You can download it for Windows and for Mac. And so I'm just gonna open it here. And uh, you can see, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the, the, the anatomy of the interface. So here's the menu bar along the top. Here's the playback controls. Here is uh, tools for editing and viewing. And you can see here, here's the, the volume or the level meter for input. So you can actually record directly into Audacity using a USB microphone like this one, which you can loan from the lab. Here's the volume meter or level meter for recordings. Again, the scale, the units of measurement is decibels, okay? And then this right here is called the timeline. And what I'm gonna do, and then at the bottom here, you can set the project rate that, that determines like the quality and also the file size. And here's the timers that show you points within the track. So let's let's go ahead and uh, just for demonstration, I'll just go to, oh yeah. So the menu, the file menu is important. You'll be using that and also the effect menu is, is really, really useful. So we're going to, import audio, so I've already gone ahead and recorded something today, this morning. Where is it? This one. Okay, and so it's good to take a couple minutes to, to look at how the playback works. So right here, if I click anywhere on the timeline, the, uh, the device will play from that. So my favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Yeah, so the blue the blue line here indicates the peak level. So maybe it's a bit high. I want ideally you want the blue marker maybe around the minus between the minus six decibels and minus six decibels. And so here are the sound waves, the amplitude or the height of the sound wave represents the volume. Again, like I said, you can click anywhere in the timeline to play from that spot. Just laughing, but also crying. Press the pause button it freezes the playhead at that spot. And if I click the pause button again, it will unfreeze. Okay. At the very end, the climax. Now, the play button, it doesn't really work the way that you might. So if I click the play button, what will happen is it will play from wherever the bookmark is. And by default, the bookmark is at the beginning. So you watch when I press play. See how it plays from here. If I press stop, the playhead disappears. Okay, so again, pause and unpause freezes the playhead at its current position. Play will make will play from wherever the bookmark is, okay? And so this little part here, I call the track head. So you can see it's the file name of the track. It extends the entire length. Um, and from here, you can click and drag the track along the timeline. So this is, again, this is the track head, I call it. I don't know if that's the real name, but I call it that. I'm gonna call this part the track body. So if I click anywhere on the track body, see it sets the, the bookmark at, to that location. Okay, and if I want to select the entire track, I can either single click the track head, right? Or I can double click the track body, okay? And here is the track specific panel. So I can mute the entire thing right away. Or if I have multiple tracks within this project, if I press solo, it will mute every other track, right? And here is the... Uh, Couple of scales. Am I going too fast? Anybody have any questions? Okay. And so here is the 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 gain, positive or negative. Again, this represents the change to the volume, not the volume itself. So if the gain is at zero, that means the volume is at its original volume, the baseline. Not doesn't mean that the volume is zero. And then here, you probably sh ideally you wouldn't need to use it, but you can adjust like the whether left side or right side, if it's in a stereo mode. You can, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, let's just play it through here. So my favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Uh, I first read this. So there's a couple of ways, the easy, cheap, the, the cheap ways you could just, oops, you could, uh, actually I can't do it here. Okay, never mind. You could, you could do gain. You could change the gain. Let's say, let's set it to minus six and let's play it down. Is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, I first read this book years ago in high school, so I would have been around the same age as the main character. 
yeah. over the, the course of the story. Yeah, note that you have to stop if you want to make stop the track if you want to make any changes. But let's say instead of zero, what you, another thing to do is you can uh, select the entire track. So either single click the track head or like I said, double track, double click the track body. And let's go to the effect menu and then look for uh, noise reduction. Okay. Oh wait, never mind. Wrong one. Effect. Uh, mm, where is it? Normalize. Normalize. And then uh, see the options. Normalize the peak amplitude. Let's say minus six decibels. And then I can preview. So it's good, like, don't just rely on your ears, you rely on your eyes, like watch the, 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 the level meter because that's absolute, it's not based on your perception of the volume. It, it's, so yeah, let's see here. Okay, so yeah, we'll go with that. And let's try playing. My favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Do you think it's maybe too low now? Uh, I first read this book years ago yeah, in high school, so I would have been around the same age as the main character over the, the course of the story. Okay, let me let me do that again. So, so I'm going to select the whole track by clicking the, the track head and then go to the effect menu. Let's go to normalize. Instead of minus six decibels, let's just set it to minus three. So that means that like the peak will, the peak will be at minus three decibels. Okay. Um, another useful trick is let's say there's background noise and you want to filter that out. Good. One thing to do is, remember how I said it's good to have like five to 10 seconds at the beginning and end of your track of just nothing. So let's say there's a fan going off or there's like someone mowing their lawn or whatever. You can, what you do is you select that portion from the track by clicking and dragging. Okay. And then I mean, ideally, you there wouldn't be any that type of thing. You with proper, you know, scouting and preparation, you wouldn't have to. But let's say you do, so you select the the uh, the portion that has the baseline, I guess. Then you go to the effect menu and then select noise reduction. And you see the little dialog window here. Step one: select a few seconds of just noise so Audacity knows what to filter out. Then click noise profile. So think of it as a sample. You're getting a sample. And so you click noise profile and then I kind of, it's not really intuitive because when you click, click noise profile, the dialogue window disappears. But the next thing you're supposed to do is select the portion, the entire portion that you want to treat. Okay. So in this case, we want to treat the entire track. So again, single click the track head or double click the track body to select the entire track. Then you go back to the effect menu, uh, noise reduction. And then from here you would do it. So you can preview if you want. Yeah, you can, you can get them. I mean, we don't have any, at this time, we don't have any wind, they're called windshields. We don't have any windshields for this device, but like, for example, that's what this lapel mic does. And the, uh, the red box, there's a windshield for those. Yeah, that's a different type of mic. It's not a recorder, it's a mic. Um, what's more else? Let's say here. Uh, I first read this book years ago in high school, so I would have been around the same age as the main character over the, the course of the story. Okay, another thing to do is maybe you want to remove or move sections of the track. So let's see here, so here, let me just play out. So my favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Uh, I first read this book years ago in high school, so I would have been around the same age as the main character over the, the course of the story. Okay, so let's see how, you notice how here toward the beginning of the track, I say what my favorite book is. Maybe during the editing process, I think it's a better story to move that to the end. So there's a little bit of suspense, right? So I'm talking about my favorite book and then you're like, okay, what book is it? And then, then bang, at the end. So maybe that's a, you, you decide that's a more compelling story. So maybe we want, we want to move that clip to the end. So where, where is that? Oops. First read this book. So my favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye. Okay. So let's say, uh, again, if you want to create a split, you just 
single click on the track body to put the bookmark there and then right click anywhere on the track and you want to go to split clip you can also use the keyboard shortcut so on mac it's command i windows control i okay and then i'm going to split here put a bookmark here right so single click on the track body and then right click to split the clip and let's say this right here i don't i don't really want it right so i could do two things i could select that entire portion again single click the track head or double click the track body to select it and um, what i could do is using the toolbar so this tool is selection tool that's the main thing you'll be using you probably don't need to use the other tools unless you're more advanced but see this tool right here where is it this one right here uh mute it's kind of i don't know if you can see it silence audio selection so you could do that or maybe just select it and just press do delete or back on your keyboard and then you notice right here there's this gap in the track so i don't want like five seconds of nothing so i'm gonna have to drag everything over again we single click the track head or actually no we don't we move the cursor to the track head and that makes the uh the grab icon appear so we can again move it along the timeline but again actually Again, I wanted this to the toward the end because this is the part where I t say what my favorite book is. So I'm going to just click and drag to the end. Here, hold on. Why am I not able to? Okay. Oh, hey, yeah. And then. Oh, good. Yeah, thanks. So what I did was I wasn't able to manually drag it. It was you. You right click on the, uh, the, the, yeah, cut it. And then you right click in the space, not on the, not on the track itself, but in the space within the track bar. And then, oh wait, hold on. Cut. Okay, you have to click to set the bookmark there and that's where, oh, I, there's not enough room. So I have to drag the track over, there we go, okay. I didn't know that, thanks. Yeah, I don't really use Audacity, but it is fairly popular. So let's do that. Okay. And paste. Okay. All right. And you notice how you can drag the track beyond the start, right? But you can also just make sure you just lined up with the, yeah. Okay, so what did we go over? We looked at, Making a universal change to the volume using this little gain scale. That's probably the quickest way. Another thing we looked at is uh, using the effect menu, specifically the uh, normalize function. We also looked at, uh, what else? Noise reduction, again, from the effect menu. And yeah, so it's at 3.30, so we're at an hour if you need to go. Um, that's really it. Only thing you might want to do is using fade in, fade out. So again, if you want to fade in and fade out, you can um, highlight a selection on the track body. And uh, again, so if you want a more abrupt fade, the selection will be narrower. But if you want a more gradual fade, either fade in or out, you want the selection to be a bit longer. So maybe let's start here. That's good. So effect menu. And then uh, fade fade in. Okay. And then let's do it for the end here. Um, let's try here. The catcher in the rye. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you want to add music, okay. Let's say I already picked a song, so you go to import. Uh, oh yeah, so I forgot to mention. So before you go, if you want to save this project, you go to File, Save Project, Save Project. And you notice how you see this dialog window, Save Project is for an Audacity project, not an audio file. For an audio file that will open in other apps, you use Export. So this file, file format is proprietary, and you can only open it in Audacity, the project file. So let's save it to the desktop. But if I want to export this, I just go to File, Export, and then I can pick a standard standalone audio format. So let's do that. Uh, ST, 
edited. Okay, and go to OK. And let's say I want to add music or like another track. You just, again, stay within the project and go to Import Audio. And we'll pick this song from an indie rock band, Explosions in the Sky. Anybody heard of them? No? And you see, it's, it's pretty loud, so I'm going to play it here. And just, I, I cried. It wasn't anything particularly tragic. It was more of a happy sadness, but... But the song's too loud. Just my voice, so really I'm have to at the end. Again, I can just reduce the volume. So let's maybe... I think we set this to normalize at... To peak at minus three decibels. What was it? So maybe I would select this entire track. So I'm going to sing... I'm going to click... Single click on the track head. Go to the effect menu. Uh, where is it? Normalize. So minus three is... It saved the previous setting, so maybe, I don't know, minus 12? Minus 12. I can't even type minus 12. Let's try preview. Okay, maybe I need to be lower, so maybe I'll, I'll just double. Let's try 24. Again, this is kind of more, more of an art than a science, so maybe not, not minus 16. Let's try that preview. Okay, let's, yeah, let's give that a go. And so you see how the amplitude changed, right? So maybe let's just give it a... In high school, so I would have been... Uh, I first read this book years ago in high school, so I would have been around the same age as the main character over the, the course of the story. Uh, okay, I think maybe it's too low. So you can always press Control Z or use the edit menu to undo or redo things. So let's try again. Single click track head to pick the whole track, effect. Uh, let's see here, uh, normalize. Maybe we'll just go back to minus 12. It'll click apply, okay. And maybe you see how there's, at the beginning of the track, there's kind of this dead air, so maybe I want to clip it off. So we single click on the track body to set the bookmark there. Again, right click anywhere to split the clip. And then let's just delete this. And then move this here. And then let's do a little fade in. Oops. Mm. Sure, that's good. And then again, we have our selection, effect menu, fade in. And then uh, let's uh, click on the music track. So it aligns, the bookmark lines with the end of the, the speech track. Split clip. And then uh, let's get rid of the rest. And then we're going to fade out. So let's pick... Uh, Selection, click and drag, effect, the effect menu will fade out. Okay, now let's let's give it a play. Uh, I first read this book years ago in high school, so I would have been around the same age as the main character over the, the course of the story. Uh, I remember just being kind of surprised by the, uh, the conversational tone of the writing and just kind of the the funny and memorable situations that the main character gets himself into <laughs> and uh, just just laughing, but also crying at the very end, the climax of the story. I won't spoil it, but just uh, the relationship that the main character has with a certain family member kind of mirrors my own situation and just, I, I cried. It wasn't anything particularly tragic. It was more of a happy sadness, but I remember just really bawling at the end but uh over the course of the story kind of looking back just besides amusement and uh sadness happy sadness i would say like just reassurance you know just sharing the same kind of worldview and outlook as the main character at that point in my life is just really reassuring and i've read it several times i used to read it like 
um, on New Year's Eve from front to back is kind of a tradition of mine. I haven't read it in years, but I, I really don't need to just because it's, it's so ingrained in my memory. So my favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. Cool. So let's save it. Uh, I would take her for, with some more, but that's just for demonstration purposes. Say project. And like I said, let's say I want to license that song, so I go to that band's website. <laughs> Explosions. I'm going to do it right now. Explosions in the sky. Anybody heard of the band? No? So I go to their website. Yeah, and then explosions in the explosions in the sky. So you actually see here, there's a license thing. Where is it? License request form. I'm just gonna fill it out right now. Digit your Q. Um, Tim York University production company and a yeah. So anybody have any questions? That's pretty much all the content I can think of. Um, distributor and a are we a charitable organization no we're not we're not a profit but not a charitable organization email wait why is it making me say email so twice ditch in it at york u.ca phone bit.ly so does anybody so you mentioned that he'll have a, a podcast assignment coming up did you, any of you have anything like that yeah, so I'll, I'll put, they're on Discord if you're on Discord, but I can email it to you. What I'm going to try to do is like combine this audio recording with this screen recording as well. But in worst case scenario, I'll just give you the slides. Oh, and of course, there's uh, references at the end. Like a good librarian, we have to cite our sources and so forth. And yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I will email it to you.